We're ready to begin. Sorry. Uh, welcome to Our Lady of the Lakes. For the second Sunday in Ordinary Time, our opening hymn is number 750, How Can I Keep From Singing? Good morning, everybody. 
We welcome especially our guests this morning and those watching on the internet. As always, we begin with our baptism, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. May God's grace, peace, and love be with you all. Every time we come, we acknowledge we are not perfect. We sin, but yet we trust in a merciful God. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you cast out our demons. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you always prayed before preaching and healing. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let's praise God with the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. God, keep your family safe with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives, reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let's hear God's word. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of a hireling? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned many months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord.
first of Israel he gathers. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He tells the number wisdom there is no limit the Lord sustains the lowly the wicked he casts to the ground praise the Lord who heals the broken hearted A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? that when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some, all this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. <coughs> Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, helped her up. Then the fever left her and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases. He drove out many demons, not preventing them to speak because they knew him. Now rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages, that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. 
So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. In 1967, during the Vietnam War, John McCain took off from an aircraft carrier for North Vietnam. Minutes later, he was, a missile blew off the right wing of his plane. As he ejected, his body hit part of the plane, breaking his right arm and knee. He landed in a shallow pond in the middle of Hanoi. An angry mob fished him out and started stripping off his clothes. A man smashed his rifle butt against his shoulder, breaking it. Another man stuck a bayonet into his ankle and his groin. Then something amazing happened. A woman, probably a Han Hanoi nurse, began yelling at the crowd, making them stop. They, she didn't want him to be harmed any further. Then the nurse knelt down, applied bamboo splints to his arm and his leg. Then the army truck arrived. As they prepared to get him on board, she gave him some tea to drink. This woman's courage and compassion is the example of the courage and compassion Jesus showed forth and calls us to imitate. In the gospel today, Jesus is casting out demons again and curing those who were sick. People who were sick and tormented were regarded as unclean and sinful because that was the cause of what was going wrong. I'm sure John McCain felt he was totally rejected at that point. In my mind, that woman had to be a Christian. Otherwise, why did she risk what she did? It's amazing when you put God in your life, the power of presence, the power of God. She got an entire crowd to stop assaulting John McCain. Pope Benedict said of the church that it has three fun functions, and it's illustrated in the gospel today. One, worship, give praise to God. You have to keep God first in your lives. Two, serve. Serve the poor, the homeless, shelters, food pantries, list goes on. And three, evangelize. Tell people about the gospel. It can happen in schools, retreat centers, education. First one, worshiping God. Unless we keep God first and ask for guidance, anything that comes from that won't work. You have to keep God centered in every single thing you do. A story, Dr. Margaret Schwentz was a great woman. She had a PhD in nursing and a master's in spirituality. She gave a workshop for the priest of the diocese of Superior about 35 years ago. I still remember her, great lady. And she was talking about that first point, prayer, keeping God first. And she gave an incredible example of what happens when you don't keep God first. What happened is he talked about a community that decided to build a church. And so they set about doing that. They got the architect, they started collecting the money, and what happened is they started building. And what happened is there were all kinds of problems that came about. There were arguments, there were fights, but finally the church got built and the process wasn't pretty but it was built one of the people of that community community and and uh, committee that formed it told her the story and then she said she made in my mind an amazing observation she looked at the person and said well did you pray that god wanted that church to be built was this church to be for God or was it to be for all of you folks very humbling question in my life as a priest I've been involved in two major building projects 
And what happened is, is that we always took it to prayer. I still remember over on the other side of the state when we were putting up a parish hall, which is beautiful and very well functioning. What we did is we always prayed. I remember before we took the final vote to proceed or not, is that we spent an hour in church in front of the Blessed Sacraments in total silence, just praying that this, what we're doing was of God. The second one was another major addition to our church. And what happened is, is that we did the same thing. We prayed. The chair of the building committee was a deeply Christian man. And every time we met, he would pull out a scripture passage that I said, where did you get that? But it was right on. Yes, there was troubles and things along the way, but not insurmountable. We learned that you've got to put God first. Second point, to serve. The church is always served through hospitals, schools, shelters, homeless places, and the like. In this church and St. Joe's, we have people that come to our doors in need. Most of the time, they just need a tack, tank of gas to get back home or to get to work. Sometimes what we do is buy an appliance because they don't have one, and it's deeply needed. And sometimes it's helping to pay the rent so that they don't become homeless. Here at A Lady of the Lakes, when COVID happened, most of you know that they had the food distribution out in the parking lot. Hundreds of people would line up for food that they needed for the day. Out of that, three churches, two Lutherans and this Catholic, formed Feed My Neighbor Food Pantry, which is now a paid-for building, <coughs> and we're serving many, many people. What we're doing is what Christ did. St. Joe's is doing the same. For a while, they had a food pantry out of their church. They got together. Third point, evangelizing. Sharing the gospel through schools, retreat centers, and education. Right now, our diocese is going through a process of apostolic mission. We're moving to the point that we have to get back to the basics and share the good news of the gospel. I'm on the committee that put together that whole process, and it's being rolled out slowly. Both churches have faith formation programs, Bible Sunday, promoting the Chosen series of the life of Jesus. How many of you have seen some of the Chosen? Some of you. If you haven't, it's free. Google it and check it out. What I like about the series is this. It looks at the different characters in the story of the gospel. Guess what? They're all flawed. God chose not perfect people to spread the gospel. He cho chose people that are just like you and me. We got our strengths and we got our weaknesses. It's not about us. It's about God working through, through us. Check it out. Jesus, at the last part of the gospel, after that day of healing and everything, went by himself to pray. He did that a lot. Why? Because he had to know what he was doing was right. And he took that to his Father in heaven. It's always amazing when Jesus would heal somebody one of the things that in the gospel says he would tell people, don't tell people what, what I just did. And then what did they do? They all blabbed it all over the place. I mean, if you've been sick or paralyzed and all of a sudden you got healed, I'd tell everybody too. But the point is, it's a literary device. It's called a messianic secret. When you get to know somebody, you do it gradually. If I come up to you and give you my whole life story, warts and all, we call that inappropriate self-disclosure. What happens is we get to know each other over a period of time, and that's what Jesus was getting at. He was not to be a show, but what he was doing with miracles was a sign of the kingdom. 
Uh, when a disaster strikes on a British naval vessel, a signal is called the still, and it's sounded. Now, the signal means stop what you're doing, pause, check your situation, and prepare to do the wise thing. They say the still has saved thousands of British lives and millions of British, British dollars. We all run into some type of emergency or situation in our life. Sometimes we don't know what to do immediately. Instead of just bolting forward, maybe what we need to do is be calm and be still and ask God what to do next. And that's what Jesus shows us in the gospel today. He always prays that way. If you look at the scriptures, the gospel, before Jesus does anything, it's prayer, then action. Prayer, action. Bob Westenberg was on his early morning walk when a garbage truck pulled up beside him. He thought the driver was asking for directions. Instead, the driver pulled out a photo of a small boy saying, this is my grandson. He's on life support in a Phoenix hospital. Now, Bob, th thinking the guy wanted a hand up, started reaching for his wallet. But then the driver wanted something much more than that. He said to Bob, I'm asking people on my route to pray for my grandson. Would you please pray for him? So the driver's commitment to prayer is the example of the commitment that Jesus has and calls us to have. Why did Jesus pray? The garbage collector asked for prayers because it's insane to think we can go through this life and do it by ourselves. You might say, well, you know, I've prayed for things and it didn't turn out the way I wanted. I didn't like it. Look at the first reading from Job today. Job is a good man. There's all kinds of horrible things happening to him. And that was in a day when they thought if something bad happened, you sinned. So the people kept telling Job, <laughs> just confess your sins. God will relent. And Job says, I didn't do anything wrong, so why do I have to confess anything? At the end of the story with Job, he affirms that even though these things were happening, are, were happening that God is faithful. And that's true. I mean, look at Jesus healed people in, in his time. Not everybody got healed. And even the healed, the people that got healed, what happened to them? Well, they died. Healing was always to be a sign of the kingdom. The message for us is that we need to pray, serve, evangelize. Let us be still. Focus on what Jesus did. Pray, serve, evangelize. Tell people about what God does for them and for us. And when we can do that, we're following the gospel, then we can say, we got it right. We got it right. So we rise. On the inside cover is our profession of faith. Together we pray, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
you will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Catholic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, or to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. So we acknowledge our needs. And in the hymnal, there should be a vocation prayer card that our bishop has asked us to pray each Sunday. We'll do that after the intercessions, as always. For those who lead churches and countries, may they find time to pray amid the chaos of life and seek direction from God in all their actions. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace among nations in Ukraine and the rising tensions in the Middle East, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For safety for all who serve our country, especially our domestic first responders and those in the military and those who have died in the service, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with chronic illness, May they feel the presence of God amid their suffering, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homeless, that they get the support and shelter they need and deserve, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us gathered here today, may we be witnesses of the mercy and compassion of Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Charles Eldridge, remembered at this Mass, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayer needs in the bulletin, the prayer request book at the entry of the church, and those written on our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear. Together, O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless, bless our diocese with many priests, priests brothers, sisters, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let's be seated as our ties are gathered and the bread and wine prepared at the altar. Our offertory hymn is number 740, We Walk by Faith.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have bread to offer. Which earth is given, human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray now that our gifts of bread and wine, our tithes and offerings be acceptable to God. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant we pray that we may become for, they may become for us the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty, salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an eternal share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you. In joyful celebration, we sing. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your spirit upon them like dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into the passion, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout this troubled world. Bring her the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with James, our Bishop, and all baptized believers. Remember those also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy, especially victims of war 
and violence on our streets. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her holy spouse, St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you through the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Join our voices and pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress as we await with hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace. Greet those about you with the some sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world and gives us peace. Happy those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion hymn is number 1022, Eat This Bread.
ancestors ate manna in the desert, but this is the bread come down from heaven. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me. Some uh, quick announcements. Uh, we have a Casey pancake breakfast with egg sausage and the whole 90 yards in the back. So you might want to go back and check that out. It's really a good eats. We also have the little black books and the little purple books for younger people for Lent. They're in the back. Help yourself. If you have somebody that, that you know that can't get to church or has been away, maybe you want to just take that and give them to them. Grief share. It was going to start at St. Joseph's on the 20th. It's not therapy group, but it's a group sharing group, and they have videos with discussion that's really quite good. I think the KCs are going to have a, uh, state raffle tickets on sale. And um, right after the final prayer, we're going to do the St. Blaise blessing. You know, that's where they put the candles up by your neck. Well, if I did it for all of you, two things would happen. I wouldn't make it back in time for St. Joe's, and I wouldn't be able to talk. So we're going to do it in mass. So just that's coming. Also, I'm going to do a little Harris poll here. We got permission to have the common cup if we want. If we would return to that, but it wouldn't we look, we're talking about maybe towards Easter or on Easter, how many of you would resume Drinking from the common cup. Please raise your hand. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you very much. Also, welcome to our guests, whether here in church or online. If you're looking for a church home, maybe you found it here at Our Lady of the Lakes. We'd be honored to have you. So, we've worshiped God. Now we're going to serve and evangelize this week. So let us pray. O oh God, you have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and one chalice. Grant us, we too, so to live that made one in Christ, 
we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, may God deliver you from every disease of the throat and from every other illness in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Also, kudos to our two new servers that joined us today. Yay. Our closing hymn is number 857, City of God. slumber 